Hello and welcome back to the Accessible PDF Forms video series. This is the second video in this series. In the previous video, I showed you how to create a fillable form in Adobe Acrobat using the Prepare Form tool. I left that video off with the form all set up, except it still needed to be tagged. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Now, I'm not going to cover everything about tagging. I, I talk about tagging in general terms elsewhere. I'm going to focus specifically on adding tags to forms because there's a couple nuances uh, regarding tags and, and PDF forms. So to start off, let's look at our tags. We don't have any, which is not a surprise because in the previous video, I deleted all of them. So to add tags, we're going to use the accessibility tool. If you don't have accessibility in your sidebar, you can search for it in the search tools box. Under accessibility, choose auto tag document. It runs in just a second and it spits out a report, which honestly I never read. All I'm interested in is the tag tree. Right, so uh, this is auto tagging and any kind of automated tool is going to be imperfect. There'll be a lot of things that we need to revise. Uh, yeah, this for, for example, I can see right off the bat, the document title is, is an H3, which doesn't make sense. It is the primary title of this document, so it should be an H1, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm only focusing on forms. Okay, and I, I think the easiest way to demonstrate how this should look is to point you to the already fixed document. So here I have a uh, the, the same PDF form that I have already corrected, and you can see what the tag structure is supposed to look like. So for each input field on this form, the tag structure should look exactly the same each input field that is its visible label and the input field itself should be wrapped in a p tag a paragraph tag the very first child of that p tag should be the visible text label the next tag under under that at a at the same level of hierarchy the sibling tag should be a form tag and then a child of the form tag is a special type of tag called an object reference, an OBJR. And that is just a reference to the, the fillable field. So again, each, each set of both visible label and, and fillable field should be wrapped in its own P paragraph tag. First child is the visible text label as a sibling of the visible text label is a form tag as a child of the form tag is the object reference that corresponds to the visible label and this applies to all of the form fields on this document both like uh, you know, text fields uh radios they all they all behave exactly the same so we got name date of birth street phone number even if you look at like uh, specific options under these radio lists. So still paragraph tag, visible text label, form, object reference. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and do the same thing for uh, our working document. And I'm actually not gonna do it for every single field because it is exactly the same for every single field. I'll just do it for, uh, for a handful of them so you get a feel for how it's supposed to work. So the first thing I wanna do is create a whole bunch of, of P tags. Um, let's do it for all these plain text fields. So let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight plain text fields. So I'll create eight new paragraph tags. And if you uh, recall how tagging works, um, it will add tags immediately beneath the item that you currently have highlighted. So I want them to appear here in the tag tree. So I'm going to select um, this paragraph, right click, choose new tag and I want to add a, a paragraph. One, two, I already forgot how many I said I was gonna add, eight? We'll go with eight. It's always easy to create and delete later. So there's four. Seven, 
and eight. Okay, and the next step is going to be to add the visible text label to each each p tag. So to do that, you select one of the p tags, and you should do this in order, right? I have the first p tag, so I'm going to choose the first visible label, highlight it with your mouse, and then on the p tag, right click and create tag from selection. There we go. And so now we have the visible text label under the P tag. We're going to do that for all of them. Again, highlight the P tag with your cursor, select the visible text, right click on the P tag, create tag from selection. I am a strong advocate for using web forms instead of PDF forms whenever possible. And once you do this a hundred times, I bet you will be too. And then we're gonna create a tag for email address. Okay, so the next thing, if you refer back to this document, we want to have form tags as a sibling, as a child of the P tag, and as a sibling at the same level of hierarchy as our visible uh, text label. So this is even easier, choosing the visible label tag because you want it to be a sibling, and beneath it, new tag and form. And I will be the uh, first to acknowledge that tagging in PDF, there's a lot of, of uh, kind of silly arbitrary rules that you just kind of have to do a whole bunch of times to um, get a hang of it. So frustration, unfortunately, is part of the process. Now we need to hunt down all of these object reference, object references. Um, okay, so uh, you, you can click on the um, uh, different elements in the tree and it'll highlight what, uh, what is contained within that tag, right? So that, that can be an easy way to find the object references. So here they are for name and date of birth. So name is going to be a, a child of the form tag, which is a sibling of the visible name field. Date of birth is going under this form tag. And if you uh, recall from an earlier video on tagging, if the if when you're dragging and dropping, there is a wider white line, it's going to put it beneath the selected element. If it is a shorter white line, it's going to be a child of the selected element. And we want the object references to be children of the form tags. I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think there's any more object references up here. They're probably all further down the tree. If you ever see path in the tag tree, that's just something that Acrobat doesn't really know how to handle. Street address. Phone, uh, zip, state, and city. I think the only one left is email, which I bet is here. And there it is. OK, so now all of these text input fields have correct tag structure. They have the parent P. They have the visible text label. They have the sibling form tag, and then each child of the form is the associated object reference tag. Um, now we have some empty tags, which we can just go ahead and delete. And you might be wondering what is going on with 
these lines. So if you recall, before I added these uh, interactive form fields, there were just placeholder line, like a lot of underscores to, so like a user would know, you know, where they're supposed to fill out a form like if they were writing it on a, on a printed document. Um, but when I actually selected the text to tag it, I only selected the actual like letters, not the underscore. So and now this is actually broken out into two separate tags. Street address is a tag and the underscore associated with street address is, is one of these things. So I can actually um, just go ahead and uh, uh, tag these as artifacts. I talk about artifacts in a, um, in a uh, another video, that's just something that Acrobat is told to ignore. And the reason we want to flag these artifacts is so it doesn't clutter up our tag tree. If we simply deleted this, then the next time we run the accessibility check, Acrobat would say, hey, wait a minute, you have untagged stuff. It's not really important, but I like the accessibility check to come back clean. And plus, if you've got a bunch of noise in your accessibility check, it can distract you from real errors. So if you have stuff like this, go ahead and um, just flag it uh, as an artifact and then it will essentially go away. So uh, that's all you have to do. Uh, you handle radio buttons, you handle checkboxes with the exact same format as any other text input. Um, and when you're done, you, um, you, need, you need to make sure the other content is tagged correctly, right? So make sure your headings are correct, make sure any figures you have are correct. And when you're done with all that, you can run the accessibility check tool, make sure things like the document title is set, language is set, if you have any figures that they're not missing, any alt text. Um, so it is a multi-step process, but it is a requirement. So thank you so much for watching this video, for slogging through it. I know this is a bit trickier of a, of a topic. If you have any questions, I am glad to walk through any of this in more detail. Please email me. My email address is ictaccess at uoregon.edu. And again, thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you in other tutorials.